In this video, we'll find the number of protons, neutrons, electrons, and the mass number for potassium. So potassium has three major isotopes, and we'll talk more about those isotopes later. But right now, let's write the things that we know are the same for all of the isotopes. The first thing we know is when we look at the periodic table, the atomic number for potassium is 19. So all isotopes of potassium will be 19. That atomic number kind of defines potassium. Atomic number also equals the number of protons in an atom. So we'll have 19 protons for each one of these isotopes. When we look at the periodic table, we have K here. And that K, just because it's written as a K, is a neutral element. If it had a plus after it, that would be considered an ion. That is not a neutral element. But as written on the periodic table, this is a neutral element. And with the neutral element, the number of protons and electrons will be equal. So the electrons will be 19 as well. So these are the things that are the same for all of the isotopes of potassium. What's different, though, are the number of neutrons. Different isotopes have different numbers of neutrons. And since protons and neutrons, if you add those together, that'll give you mass number. Different isotopes will have different mass numbers as well. When we look at the periodic table, the way we find the mass number is we look at the average atomic mass. So right here is the average atomic mass for potassium. We're going to round that to the nearest whole number, 39. Sometimes these numbers are given to you and you just fill them in. But if not, for the mass number, look at the periodic table, round this number to a whole number. Now we know we have a mass number of 39. We have 19 protons. So that means we have to have 20 neutrons. So 20 neutrons for this isotope of potassium. And we name it based on the mass number, potassium 39. That would be the name. When we look at the mass number, we got this from the periodic table. We rounded it. Because this average atomic mass, that's an average of all the masses of the isotopes based on how much there are of each one, called abundance. Most of the isotopes, if you had a block of potassium, most of the atoms would have 20 neutrons and a mass number of 39. So the average is pretty close to 39. About 93% of potassium atoms have this atomic mass. You can't really just look at the periodic table and know what the other isotopes will be. You must have to do an experiment to figure that out. But there are two others that are stable. We have potassium 40, which means 19 plus 21. That would give us 40. We'd call it potassium 40. There really is just a trace of potassium 40. And then potassium 41, it's about 6%, 7% of potassium atoms. So 22 plus 19, that would give us 41. So these are the isotopes of potassium. And really the big difference in isotopes, they have different neutrons. They do, though, have the same number of protons. And let's write potassium 41 in here for the name. We can write the notation for each individual isotope using what's called nuclear notation. So we put a 39 up here. That's the mass number. And the atomic number, 19, goes down here. So that's potassium 39. We could also do potassium 40. And then it's going to be 19 again, because that's the atomic number, the number of protons. And all potassium atoms have that. And then we could do potassium 41. And that would have the 19 again. So that's nuclear notation. So each one of these describes an isotope, whereas the periodic table that describes an average of the isotopes, each isotope we have here, based on how much there is. This is Dr. B with the number of protons, neutrons, electrons, and the mass number for potassium. Thanks for watching.